Kia ora team, Brad here for the run experience. As a young athlete, I was fortunate enough to be coached by one of the best triathlon coaches in the world, Dr. John Hallamans. Now he competed at a really high level himself, placing 13th in the world triathlon champs, and this was when he was 40 years of age. Dr. Hallamans coached me in triathlon from my mid-teenage years right up into my early 20s and helped me compete at the Hawaiian Ironman World Championships. Dr. Hallamans knew the sports science backwards, but always encouraged his athletes to dial into what the body was telling us. Having that mind-body connection is not just important for health, but it can improve performance in this very device and technology dependent world. Now over here you'll find a table that was prepared by Dr. John Hallamans that lays out his really simple green, yellow, red approach. What I like most about this table is the column overall subjective feeling, which adjusts for the athlete level, ability, and fitness. So we have green, which feels comfortable and you can keep that up for a long time. Amber, somewhat, somewhat uncomfortable and you can keep it up for maybe 60 to 90 minutes. And then red, which is uncomfortable. And depending on your fitness, you can keep it up for between six and 60 minutes. The general consensus is that there's five zones identified as easy, steady, moderately hard, hard, and very hard. This terminology is really important because it immediately says something about how we perceive those five zones subjectively. We can simply score it from one, easy, to five, very hard. Our default system is always to return to that terminology when we're training and racing well before we look at the scientific numbers, rather than vice versa. To help with this, we need to focus in on feedback from our body. This can be through breathing, muscle discomfort rating, and an overall interpretation of our ease of movement. For breathing, you'll be somewhere on the spectrum between conversation pace, zone one, and panting, breathing heavily, zone five. And that a degree of muscle discomfort will help you determine what zone you are in. Zone one and two can be called green, zone three yellow, and zone four and five red. Green, so called because the pace in zone one and two, can be kept up for a long time without any recovery required. These are the safe zones, the anabolic zones, or health zones, as they strengthen the bodily systems immediately. Red, zone four and five, are the catabolic zones as the body systems are stressed and they break down before they recover and adapt during that recovery time. If not enough recovery, that's that rest and nutrition, is allowed between sessions, which contain a zone four and or five component, the body will gradually weaken, not adapt and strengthen. This is why for even competitive athletes, you can't really have more than 10 to 20% of all your training time spent in that zone four and five, and preferably it needs to be spread throughout the week. Amber, zone three, is an interesting as it can work positively, that's anabolic, when fresh and fully recovered, but negatively, that's catabolic breakdown if you're already tired. It is safest not to spend too much time in zone three. When doing steady zone, that's that two, zone two training over undulating terrain, it's really easy to drift into zone three at the uphill section, so watch out for that. I sometimes bring zone three into a session which contains zone four and five components, to keep the athlete from overdoing that zone four and five. An example is my up-tempo tempo sessions, uh, 800 meters or 1,000 meter reps, and I'll do maybe six reps and have those up-tempo zone three spread in between the zone four and five. When you train by listening to your body, rather than solely relying on data from heart rate power and even lactate threshold readings, your confidence and joy will increase. Use the data for feedback. I tend to use my heart rate data retrospectively sometimes after a session, rather than continually checking my watch during those sessions, which really takes away the joy and that internal feedback. If you'd like a little bit more information on Dr. John Hallamans and his coaching methods, then I'll put a reference link to these books in the description below. Thanks for watching team. If you want a little bit more of a deep dive into the zones, check out this earlier video that Coach Dan did. It's a cracker. It goes into a little bit more detail, but I hope you really enjoyed this simple way of looking at zone training. Now please, go out there, get strong, earn those miles, champion compassion, and I look forward to catching up with you on the next video.